Right, hey guys, I'm uploading this race from the replay point of view. I didn't record the race because I had a few issues with my PC overheating, um, causing iRacing to crash and kick us out. I've lost a bit of iRating over it. Um, and I also want to see the quality of this. So obviously I'm running a replay camera in cockpit um, and I'll talk you know, through the race as I would do if I was racing. Um, but yeah, it's mainly to see the quality on the other end on YouTube to see if it's better. See if you guys um, prefer it this way. If you do, let me know in the comments. If you don't, let me know in the comments. Um, right, let's give it a go. So we qualified P2 for this one. I was pleased with my time. So just holding station E behind car number one. So I actually got a good start and jumped him here. So I got my nose ahead, but I was always going to let him back past anyway because he was very quick. Uh, it was five tenths quicker than me in practice, and I did a 22 2, I think. So I knew there was no way that I could really keep up. So I've just seen his back end stepping out a little bit there. Now the problem I've been having lately in the touring cars is as soon as you start battling with the guy in front, everybody else behind catches up and gets stuck in. So I had a good opportunity here to pick up some decent eye rating. So I didn't want to fight this guy, but then his back end went there, so... I had to then take the lead at this point. So it's zero X races as well, so I drove pretty well. Didn't make any mistakes. Apart from the odd little one here and there. The gap in front is now 1.2. So what I'll do, I've got no other way of doing this, but I'll keep jumping out to different cameras. If there is another way of doing this, let me know. That's the only way I know to hit the space bar, get the, the menus up and everything. So you can see the field's obviously tightly bunched, as it usually is behind this guy. So I think at that point I was 1.6 seconds ahead, which is, I believe, he's out of the draft. So he's got no draft advantage behind me at this point. But the rate in which he closes was enough for me to know you know, it's not worth fighting with him. Ridiculously quick. So from the get-go, as soon as I qualified P2 from the get-go, my goal in this race was to just stay with him, pull a gap from P3, try and finish strong. Uh, just manage the race, basically. So many times this week at Road America... I found myself being drawn into a battle whether I want to or not. And then the entire field just bunches up behind you. So you can see all the cars there lining up. If me and Patrick, he was called, if me and Patrick were at a battle, and if I was just trying to defend and fight him for first place, they'd be all over us. So my plan was just to keep it together till he was ready to make his move and just let him go. Took him behind and see what we can do. So the I'm guy in. behind is catching. The gap's now 0 0.48. There's an incident behind there. In terms of lines and, and everything, like it's pretty tight. If you can spot any mistakes that I'm making, let me know, because 
This is great. Come on, keep nailing those exits. That's 20 minutes to go. 20 minutes. Always looking to go quicker, but um, this is one of my best performances around here this week. Like I say, Zero X didn't really put a foot wrong. My lines felt good. Didn't push the braking zone too much or anything like that. Just didn't want to uh, risk mu as much as they had been previously. So just reduce that risk factor, manage the race, bring on safety rating, bring on the eye rating. So my pace is probably very similar to P3, P4, P5. I've just got track position and bit of an advantage. So that was the corner, the final turn. That's where he really started to close me down. And once he got in my draft, it was, it was game over. But like I say, that was the game plan for me from the start. So we'll go back on board when he when he comes past me. So I believe the the stream deck, if I got one of them stream deck, I could switch between camera views like that, I believe. I'm new to all this, so still learning about all this sort of stuff. So again, very similar line to Patrick behind me there. But again, almost identical, but somehow he's just able to just carry much more speed. Don't let him through. So I think at this point I've already been on the mic and told him, just be patient, I'll let you past. I'm not defending there, that's just my line, I sort of double apex it. So I was going to let him go here, obviously right behind me in the draft, he's got a great run. And I was going to let him go to my outside, down the inside for the braking zone. But he backs out, tucks in behind me. Obviously, just thinks he can get it done better on the on the straight. So you just use a little bit more of that outside kerb going in on the braking zone much more on that bit as well so we'll go back on board here as he comes past again apologies for the way I've got to do it but I know of no other way so I'm just early on the brakes giving plenty of room in case he drifted out wide going in on a tighter line So I'll put myself to his right hand side so he knows I'm not even thinking about attacking. Coming off the throttle again just so he knows I'm not thinking about that move. The only reason I've looked a little bit left is so I can see the braking markers because the last thing I wanted was to go into the back of him, pick some damage up and potentially wreck both of our races. Prefer a little short shift to third there. Sorry, you shift down to third there and back up. Short shift to fourth. I know the PDS guys, which is the setup I'm using, that's where I got the setup from. They just keep that in fourth and 
pull through in fourth gear, but I just prefer it getting the extra rotation going down into third. 15 minutes remaining, 15 minutes to go. So, I'm sort of half distance then. Looking good, and I'm just staying with him at this point. As you can see, again, very similar lines through these turns. I've not actually checked Patrick's I rating. I'll have a look after this. I've got decent pace in this. I was in a race earlier. It's on my videos if you scroll down and have a look. I think it's uh, punching above my weight, I think it says. Um, it's either that one or tough, tough race okay, or something don't like that. Don't let this guy distract you. Um, Come on, keep pushing. But in that one, I was fighting guys 4.9 ki rating, um, 4.5, 3.8, 3.9. 2.4 currently. So like I say, I'm well out my depth, but I'm I'm able to hold my own with them, which I'm very pleased about. Whereas the VRS and IMSA and the Le Mans series and all them, I do struggle to, to keep up with the quicker guys. So we're getting off the throttle nice and early. We'll come back out. And you can see there just the difference with the gap now pulling to the guys behind because now I'm sat in Patrick's draft getting pulled along. But what's um, what's telling of the fact that he's obviously a, a very good driver, much better than me, is that from this point in the race, he just pulls and pulls and pulls, and he ends up in about seven seconds a lap. Uh, sorry, seven seconds ahead of me at the end of the race. Now I know he's got the draft from the Cayman ahead, but you know I'm I'm in his draft as well, so I should be able to stick with him, but. I just couldn't, and I don't really think I made many mistakes. Let's say he was just very quick. Now, he must be killing his tyres there, because he's much, much harsher on his inputs, I would imagine. Keep the pressure on. Don't give him a break. He's pretty slow into turn 14. For the back end to be sliding about like it is. Uh, so I don't think he's better on tyres. So I don't think it comes down to that. Unless, of course, he's heating up the rears, which gives him more grip. I don't know, but... I'll tell you the gap there, the guys behind. And this, like I say, this was always the plan to just stick with him. Not take any unnecessary risks. So it was a calculated race, really, um, and I think I came out of this. I think I came out of this with 84, I rating, which is a is a big gain. Like, I didn't look at championship points. I've not been racing the touring car for the past couple of months. I should have been because obviously most of the guys who I'm racing here are probably in Division One. So I'm in Division 2. I was going to have a series go at the VRS GT Sprint Championship, but I got promoted to Division 2. I, I was in Division 3 last season, um, and I found myself in the top 20 without really thinking about it. I just noticed my name was on there. Um, but as soon as I got promoted into Division 2, just out of my league, like I said. But these guys, I may just have a chance of doing something there. So you can see that Patrick's now, you know, closer to that Cayman than I am to him. 
and he just pulls and pulls and pulls at this point. Whether that's me dropping okay, the Duncan, draft. Okay, Duncan, 10 minutes to go. That's 10 minutes left. I'm not sure. Well, let's say, I mean, there's only 10 minutes there. I don't know if Crew Chief's coming through on the, on the video. Go on, keep pressing him. Force I would imagine mistake. it is. So 10 minutes to go in the race, and it, it's at this point that he starts to pull away. Now, I'm not sure if I made a mistake. I don't think I did. So we're still within a second at this point. So we'll go on board for a lap. So I actually hooked that apex up better than him, I think. Hook that one up, got a pretty good exit. Let me know if I'm mistaken about all this. If there's quicker way, better lines. If I'm breaking too early, anything like that. So I'll break between the three and the two here, I think. Extend it as much as I can. Hit that apex, run it out a little bit. Obviously picked up a little bit of dirt on the outside, I think, but I think it is a pretty good good line. Short shift into a fourth, and again, I don't seem to be losing much time there. Using all the track, hitting every apex. Breaking before the two there. So this is the only one that I'm not sure about. So I'll sort of hit that first apex, let it run out wide a little bit. Ease the throttle until I see that curb and then plant it. Which seems to, you know, make sense to me. Pretty quick through there again. In the sixth as soon as I can. Hold a tight line here. So, I mean, so far to me, this is almost a perfect lap. There's an incident in. Canada corner. We think it might be Carlos. Okay, that's not. <laughs> okay, so that that's very wide. So I missed that apex by a good car's width. But apart from that one, I'm pretty good. Actually, that's where he's gone. So maybe that's where I've dropped out the draft. And again, pretty good apex there, and pretty good exit, I think. So the guy behind, uh, guys behind have gone at this point. There was an incident. They dropped back to over 10 seconds at this stage. So again, just the movement of his car seems erratic. Seems to really throw it in. Like the back end looks like it's stepping out on them faster corners. But yeah, like I say, once he was out the draft, he was gone. There was no catching him. So, you'll be able to see if the overlays are on. I'm assuming they're on. I don't know how it works, actually. I'm assuming that uh, the overlays and everything still work on a replay. I've never tried it. I've never done this before. The gap in front is now 1.5 seconds. So we've got a couple of back markers to deal with here. They got out of the way really well. Certainly didn't hold me up. It's difficult. I don't particularly enjoy some of the multi-class stuff. I've been doing some of the sim lab stuff because one of my mates is 
new Y racing and coming through his license and so he's doing similar production challenge or whatever it's called I don't like that because the, the difference in speeds between the Mazdas the Pontiacs the Jettas and the Mustangs there's just too much to contend with the Mustangs tend to be way too overpowered for that series and on the little twisty tra tracks that just cause a lot of problems don't like that I've had nothing but problems in the ILMS with the LMP cars coming through actually Road America was the last time got to the kink and one just on the inside of me understeered left in plenty of room just understeered didn't I mean push me off race ending incident for me he was fine So it's pretty dull from this point on, to be honest. There's not much more that goes on, but I just wanted to upload it. Um, firstly, to see what the quality is like in cockpit and if it's worth me uploading them like that in future, which would also stop the potential of my computer struggling while I'm recording. Don't know if that's what's causing it. I'm not really into computers. I'm not a sort of tech guy with that sort of stuff, but... I would imagine it's putting unnecessary strain on while I record if the program's running. So that was one reason for doing this. Uh, the second was in case anybody had any uh, thoughts about how to manage a race when you find yourself out your depth, out your comfort zone with faster guys in front and behind um, and trying to adopt the a risk-free strategy if you like um, then hopefully there's something to be gained from from watching the video the gap in front we'll go on board it's now about with Patrick seconds. see if there's anything we can learn from this one see if he's in the same gears same lines So the same through there, it looked like he broke a little bit later. He seems to be much more sawing at the wheel. I don't know if that's just replay. No, very oversteery there. Replay's not good there, showing the revs. I wonder if he's got a higher brake valve value because that does make the rear float a little bit more and that is what his car's two minutes to go for two minutes. it's off throttle for a lot longer than me there if the replay is accurate see it looks messy it looks sloppy he's correcting his uh his line as he goes into the corner. Incident in turn seven. The track temperature is decreasing. It's now 40 Celsius. See, there to me, it looks like he's almost lost the back end and just floated it round the corner and then picked the throttle and steering up when he had to she's clearly working for him it's much wider there it takes a much wider entry so all these little bits that add up see down his gears a lot earlier than me there again much wider on entry obviously just carrying that little bit more speed through and his revs haven't dropped at all He's actually in fourth gear, so he's holding the revs high in fourth gear there. He doesn't let them drop, he's just holding it. So you can so he's almost counter steering the wrong way as the car 
bites into that apex. And again. Crazy. He's absolutely on the edge. And pushing beyond belief when he has no reason to. Unbelievable. So that was a 22. Oh, his last lap was a 22 dead. What's this one? 22-3. Whereas mine... 23-6. So that's why he's able to pull that gap. As you can see. So if you're interested in um, the Simicube 2 Pro Drive, Pro Drive, Simicube 2 Pro True Drive settings that I use, there's a video in my um, videos. If you scroll down, you'll see it. Um, settings that I got actually from the VRS website, which are meant for their the gap ahead is now 5.1. Their direct drive motor. Turn seven. I just thought I'd see if it worked. Got them. I got the idea from watching Dave Cam's video, where he talked about the different settings that you can get on their website. Um, and that's a 20 newton meter motor. This is 25, so I just thought it's going to be somewhere near. Just tweak a few things, and it it works perfectly. So if you want to try it, set your true drive settings the way VRS suggest. Um, set the in game how they suggest, and then just tweak each car accordingly, and it's absolutely perfect for me. See what you think. Uh, if you do, go try it. Let me know in the comments if it worked for you. I've not tried it with all cars, but everything that I have tried it seems great. This was a little strong, so I had to turn this one down, I think. My starting point's 31. Um, in, in car, in the black box settings, 31 there. Um, 25 in game. 60% true drive um, that'll make sense to you if you're obviously familiar with what I'm talking about um, so I go from 31 and just adjust accordingly uh, but it's absolutely perfect so yeah find that video and you, you can see it sort of walk you through it uh, in the, the true drive software if you've got any questions about it give us a shout so that's that race done so I'll show you what we picked up from that. I'm assuming all this is still gonna record okay as we go. So we'll quit out of there. We don't need to see that. We'll get rid of that. So this is where I've uh, set that stuff up that I was talking about. I won't go through it now because I don't know why I've got to click that a million times to uh, make it disappear. So we don't want that. So I'm just gonna see what. Um, I rating Patrick was interested. Um, I'm assuming it's this one. So the strength of field in it was 2.7k. It was the top split. Um, Patrick, there he is. So he was car number one. So 6.8k I rating. So we were able to stay with him for five laps. Something like that, five laps. Which I'm very pleased about. I was car number 17. So I gained 75 I rating out of that. Um, so not quite as good as I thought. But still very good. Not quite as good as this guy. Oh no, he lost 98. Jesus. Oh, it's, uh, it's a GT4 class. Okay. So was I the biggest winner in all that? 87. No, I wasn't Nate Olsen. I took 87 from it. 79 for Ahmed al -Rassi. But apart from them two, it was me. So back up to 2.5k, I lost close to 300 I rating from disconnects and being put into the wall at this circuit in this car. Um, which I found an incident for, I don't really do that, but it just seemed deliberate to me. I left the guy room on the outside at Canada Corner. 
Um, there was plenty of room, but he he wanted more and, and decided to come straight through the back of me rear quarter, turned me, and I just went straight into the wall and ended the race. Anyway, obviously we've put that behind us, but it's took us the best part of two days keeping it clean and everything else to bring my safety rating back up to close to 3.0 and the I rating back to uh, 2.5k, which we've kind of hovered around for a long time. When I hit 2k, I set some, uh, I set the title of my Twitch. I don't do much Twitch streaming these days for the same reason that I don't, um, that I struggle with the, the computer. Um, it just doesn't like it. It's not powerful enough. It's only a uh, GeForce 1070 that I'm running. So it's not that equipped for that sort of thing. Um, but I don't do it anymore. But I set my Twitch title to iRacing the road to 3K. Because I thought I've hit 2K. I'm in the top split. Or I'm hitting the top split a lot of the time. I can take a lot of numbers from these guys. And it's just not the case. Not many people from what I've seen get above 2.5K. Um and it is very difficult so when you see people of 2.8 you know 3.0 3.5 whatever anything basically anything above 2.5 um you know the you know they deserve to be there and they've probably fought for it because it takes me a long time to get anywhere near 2.7 um most of the races if i'm in vrs or the imsa races or anything like that i'm i'm fighting all race for scraps for you know two three ten if i'm lucky i rating because i'm finishing 20th 21st you know 18th stuff like that um and that's if if i get lucky if i don't crash out if i don't um have an incident um if there's no issues with the pit stops and stuff like that so to come out of a race like this rubbing shoulders with People of 6k rating and coming away <coughs> in P2 with, with 75 is, is a massive, massive positive. So this is why I'm going to look forward to doing the championship next season in, in the touring cars. Um, we'll carry on practicing in this one. So yeah, hopefully um, if you're looking in how to manage a race, how to do well um, when you're out your depth, hopefully you've got something from the video um any questions or anything just give us a shout uh, if you're new to the video if you want to consider hitting the subscribe button i think it's over there i've moved stuff around <coughs> the reason i've moved stuff is because i'm putting a p1x uh upgrade to a p1x is my next thing and i will be upgrading the card in the computer and i will be moving from vr to triples because it's just killing me it's killing my eyes i can't do uh, endurance races or anything like that so obviously i'm in the um i'm in a team the cxr boys uh are constantly doing endurance races and i can't really take part because i can't sit for two to three hour stints with the vr on it's just not good for me so i want to move away from that and into triples uh or potentially ultra wide i'm not too sure probably triples they're winning at the moment uh, just like the aesthetic of them really and I like the way people cover them and make a full dash and everything out of uh, button boxes and stuff. I do like the look of that. So I'll lose the immersion from the VR, but I'll gain the immersion of having the cockpit and you know all this gear that we pay thousands of pounds for will be visible and I'll be able to see what I'm touching and stuff. So yeah, them upgrades are coming. I'll do a video on the build and the install of everything and hopefully help you guys to make some decisions about upgrades yourselves. So yeah, if you want to consider hitting subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, stuff will be popping up um, above you. There's still my Thrustmaster giveaway. Uh, all my old equipment being given away for free. I've said I'll cover postage once I hit 500 subs. Um, so if you're new to sim racing and it's a way to get into it, it's a very expensive hobby. So that may just help someone get into it who otherwise wouldn't be able to. So yeah, cheers guys. See you on the next one.